Hello. <laughs> the magic word. Hello generally means somebody's at our. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Crystal with the Dog Psychology and Training Center. Um, we are doing part two this week of our Preparing Dog for Baby series. Um, and I think I may not be live. Hmm. It says I'm starting, so I don't know if that means I'm live now or if it's still loading, but I'm just going to go ahead and proceed. Um, so for those of you that are just joining, again, my name is Crystal Nearman. I'm with the Dog Psychology and Training Center. Uh, for our families that uh, don't know yet, we are expecting our fourth child. And we've had a couple families of, of dogs that we've trained who have reached out recently who are also expecting um, their first. And so they had a lot of questions about how to prepare a dog for baby, the do's and don'ts, um, what's best, what's wrong, all of those new parent questions that suddenly pop into your mind. Um, and so we decided to do this series just to help clarify some things on how we do it. Dogs, with dogs and dog training, there are a lot of right ways to do a lot of things. And there are a lot of wrong ways that might be okay for another dog, but for certain dogs, it just doesn't work. Um, and so with that being said, what we do as a practice, as our family, may not work for you and your dog. And that's okay. Please reach out to a professional trainer if you are still having issues, especially if your dog is easily stressed, has anxiety, fearful behaviors, reactivity, or aggression reach out to a trainer before baby comes so you can start working through these things. And hopefully when baby comes, that transition for your dog will be a lot less stressful and happy. <laughs> so that's the goal here. Um, so last week's, if you missed it, I'll post a link in the comments when we're done here, all about preparing, excuse me, um, dog for baby. So we talked about some exercises to start training your dog to do now. So when baby comes, your dog will have a foundation of one communication um, and two obedience and manners. Um, and so you can start laying that groundwork now, preparing your dog for that, that distancing you might need because you have a new baby on your lap. And so maybe your dog can't be on your lap at the same time. Or if you were like me when I had <laughs> those first few weeks when I got home, I was just exhausted, right? The baby was always eating. I felt like I never slept. I didn't want anybody touching me or being by me, including my dogs. And I love my dogs. So it didn't mean that I didn't love my dogs or that I didn't love my family. I just needed some space because I just felt like I was being used by this little baby that never stopped, right? Um, and so my dogs, they're obviously very well trained, but I could just tell them, go lay down right now. Um, and so it wasn't a big deal to them. It wasn't like, oh, mom doesn't want me by her. It was just something they were used to. There are times that I just can't give my dogs attention. And so I say, go lay down. And they do. Um, and so practicing those type of things now prepares your dog um, for that little surprise baby um, when it comes home from the hospital. And your dog's like, whoa, what's this little monster? And why don't you look at me or talk to me or touch me anymore? Um, so that's what last week's... Um, um, Facebook Live was about. So if you missed it, I'll post that link. In the today's, we're going to be talking about what to do when you bring baby home. So after baby's home, that introduction, all of those things basically post baby. So a lot, the last one was all about pre-baby. Now we're going to be talking about post baby. So um, baby bubble space, it's a thing. Your dog should definitely know it. Um, your dog does know it in a pack of dogs. If a mama dog has puppies, the other dogs aren't allowed to come by those puppies for a while, usually until the puppies start exploring on their own and can approach the other dogs, are the other dogs then allowed to interact with those puppies. The whole mama dog ferociousness thing, the mama dog protectiveness thing, it's a thing for a reason, right? And it's no different from us mama parents, right? Like we want to protect our babies, we wanna keep them safe, and not that your dog's gonna do anything baby, but it's important to set those guidelines now so your dog understands that this baby one, it's yours and not theirs. That's a huge thing that we deal with a lot where families come to us and they'll say, oh, my dog's very protective of my baby. He won't let me, um, you know, change my baby's diaper without barking or, or growling, you know, like he's trying to protect the baby. That's not protection. That's your dog thinking that your baby is your dog's property and he's telling you, you didn't have permission to that baby. And so there's a big, 
big, big blurry line between protectiveness and ownership when it comes to canines. If you are threatening your baby and you are assaulting your baby and your dog's growling at you, that's protection. Kudos to your dog. But if you are loving on your baby or even if you're just scolding your baby because they're about to do something dangerous or harmful and you say, no, don't do that. Your dog should never have any aggression or reactivity towards you in that moment. Um, and so these guidelines that we do with our own dogs that we're going to recommend for you guys to do are just some of the subtle things that help dogs get into that get into that mindset of this is your baby, the humans, and it is your property and you get to protect it. You get to keep it safe. And your dog is a part of your family, just like your baby, but it's not your dog's baby. So day one, when we come home with our baby, um, we let our dog sniff the baby in the car seat, but we don't let our dog stick its face right in the baby's face in the car seat. Your dog can smell that baby from across the room. So there is no need for him to be touching, pushing head in your baby's face, waking them up or doing anything of the sort. Um, because in the canine world, remember we talked about mama dog keeping all the other dogs baby. It's called space and space is a sign of respect. So when you have that new baby home, our dogs just kind of naturally did this. They would get to be about one to two feet away. They'd kind of stick their nose up and sniff that air around the baby. And then they just kind of walk away. Or if they were really curious, they kind of walk around to the front of the car seat and look in there. But again, they weren't all up in the baby's face, right? They were being respectful and keeping that space. Um, and so don't let your dog crowd your baby. If you're holding your baby and your dog comes up, definitely they're allowed to, to sniff them and interact them. But again, make sure your dog's being in that process. They shouldn't be pushing on them. They shouldn't be sniffing on them really hard. Um, they don't even need to touch your baby to sniff it. Um, and so again, you know your dogs. You know if they love kids or don't kids, don't love kids. And maybe you don't. And so I would have extra precautions in that case because this is a new thing for your dog. And so making sure your dog only has very positive interactions, meaning your baby's not grabbing or pulling your dog's hair or your baby doesn't just scream in your dog's face because it sniffed its face and woke the baby up and now it's screaming and the dog's gonna be like terrified because why is this thing screaming at me? Just making sure you have very, very positive interactions for a dog that is maybe not been exposed to children or babies before to make sure that they only have happy feelings towards this baby. Um, so baby bubble space. Um, so we talked about bringing the baby home. This also applies to when you start doing tummy time with your babies meaning they get to lay on the carpet or the uh, baby blanket and they start to kind of strengthen those tummy muscles, preparing them for crawling. We also didn't let our dogs crowd our babies in that way either. So some of the rules that we didn't really have to enforce, but our dogs just did was um, one, they didn't lay like right up next to our babies. Like, so they were like really like super cuddly close and they didn't try to lay on or paw our babies at all. What they would do is they may come down and lay on part of the mat so they were close to the babies, um, which is a really great enticer for crawling because there's a baby close by and the baby's like, oh, what's this? And so they want to scoot. But they made sure they, again, made sure maintained that spatial distancing from your baby. Um, and again, that's a preference thing. I don't think um, when you see all those cute Facebook pictures of dogs, little, little dogs cuddled with a baby in a baby swing or... Um, you know, laying next to or almost on top of a baby, um, like they're super cuddly close. To me, that's terrifying. Um, that's a, a situation that could go wrong very fast. Dogs are canines, they're animals. The way they would correct a puppy is pretty ferocious compared to how they, if they were to do that to a baby. Um, and so in a dog's defense, they're not necessarily doing anything wrong in the canine world. Um, if a baby or a puppy was to startle them or jump on them or pull their hair, it's absolutely correct for a dog to kind of do like a quick snap at or even mouth that puppy on its neck to communicate, this isn't allowed. But if you do that to a human, especially a baby, it's going to make them bleed. It can leave marred, and it's not necessary if you make sure your dog understands, one, this is not their baby. They can't treat it that way because it's yours, the humans. And two you're in charge of correcting your baby. So if your baby does anything wrong to your dog, anything that, not necessarily wrong, but 
maybe they pull your dog's fur or they grab too hard, making sure you as the adults are quickly, you're right there with them always, but you're quickly there to say, no, 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 let's be gentle. And you show your baby how to gently hold your dog's fur. Or if my baby was, you know, a month old and didn't understand and started to grab because they just grab anything they can get and they've got a pretty fierce grip. I would just quickly open their little hand and slip my finger in there instead and then kind of rub their fist on the, the dog's fur. So there are ways to show your dog that you are going to advocate for them so they don't ever feel like they have the need to correct your child for themselves. Um, so baby bubble space, just making sure that that is something that's maintained. When our baby started to actually scoot and, and move towards our dogs is when our dogs would get closer to our babies because they understood oh, this little monster is ready to interact with me. And so there was a little door open there that interaction was now approved. Um, and that is just the natural progression of life. So um, something to consider. Um, the other thing is you can call it baby math or um, babies equal good things. But anytime your dog is showing good behavior around your child, in the same room of your child, doesn't have to be within a one foot or two foot proximity of your new baby. But if you are, for example, holding your baby on your lap or nursing your baby or, or whatever, and your dog is laying nicely at your feet or on the other side of the room on their dog bed, just having a cup of treats or a treat pouch that you can just pick a couple up and toss over at your dog to reward that moment in time. One of the most overlooked things in a dog's life is good behavior. We're so quick to realize and remark on those negative behaviors, but the positive ones tend to be overlooked. So as you go through this time of less attention to your dog because your baby is demanding all of your time, it's very important to make sure you are marking and rewarding every positive thing your dog is doing with and around that baby so you can start showing them that's the behavior I'm going for. And they don't feel the need to get pushy or needy or start to act out because bad attention is still attention, right? Um, so making sure you're, you're marking those positive things. So if your dog's laying on their bed real nicely, toss some treats. If they're laying quietly at your feet, toss some treats. If you're doing tummy time and your dog's about a foot and a half or two feet away, just kind of laying there watching your baby do weird bubbly sounds, throw them a couple treats. Just making sure they understand that's, that's the behavior I love and that's the behavior I want to keep seeing. And the other thing that's super important um, that I want you to not only understand for yourself, but start to teach your children as they get older as well. Um, so obviously when they're, you know, in their twos, threes, and fours, some of these they can start to pick up on. When I do kids and canine class in um, preschool and lower elementary age classrooms, we talk about these a lot because kids are much more perceptive, perceptive than we give them credit for. So stressful body language signals in a dog, specifically a dog who has a new interaction with a baby that they've not seen before, because it can be stressful. That baby crying in the middle of the night, it's probably not just waking you up, it's probably waking your dog up. So again, your dog's getting a lack of sleep. Um, there's new smells in the house. There's just so much change that's happened. Your dog is gonna be stressed just like you are those first few days, first few weeks, first few months home. That's not a bad thing. Stress is good. Stress is what helps us grow and develop and to become better things, better people, better dogs, everything. But it's appropriate to understand your dog's also going through stress too. So take it easy on them and understand they're going to be stressed and that doesn't make them a bad dog. But it is, again, as you are the leader of the house, it is your job to notice these stress signals in your dog and show them how to healthily take care of them, how to leave that stress. So one of the things we always taught our dogs is to um, you know, if they ever felt like they needed to, my dogs have never tried to bite my ch children, but when they were babies and they're starting to go through that crawling phase and we don't let our kids crawl on our dogs, but when they're babies, things happen, right? And so I could see my baby get ready to pull up on my dog and I, you know, be quick to get up and go over there and get the baby. And you'd see our dogs kind of do a sharp look like this. They never tried to bite our baby. They never tried to do anything like that. But what they were saying was, no, I don't know what you're thinking you're going to do, but that's not okay with me. And so we would quickly, instead of correcting that behavior, we would say, Kester, go lay down and show him you don't have to stay there because <laughs> staying there, my baby's going to crawl on you because my baby doesn't know what that sharp looks, what that sharp look, le look means right now. Right. But Kester, who was uncomfortable with that situation, he didn't need to stay there. 
he could go lay down on his dog bed. He could go lay down in his crate, wherever he felt like he needed space, he could go get it, but he didn't have to fight for it right there. Right. He didn't have to own his spot. He was laying at and make that baby leave. Cause that's impractical and not going to happen as an adult, as the, the leader of the family, as the leader of my child, I was going to quickly pick up and remove my baby. But I also wanted Castor to know he needed to advocate for himself as well in a healthy way. So um, instead of being, you know, very stern or mean or because it surprises you as a new parent because you're like, did he almost bite my baby? Was he going to bite my baby? All these things go through your head. Be calm and just let your dog know they can redirect. If your dog doesn't know the lay, go lay down command, pick up their leash. So you have a drag leash on your dog, a six foot drag leash in the house all the time when you're home. Pick up that leash and say, come lay down and just walk them over to their bed. Have them get over there, wait till they sit or lay down on it, and then you can go back to the couch or back to your baby or wherever you need to go. But making sure your dog knows how to excuse him, him or herself from those situations. Um, so stressful body language to look for. The head tells you so much, so much. But it's also some of the more difficult things to uh, to see, especially if you're not skilled or trained to, to look at these things and also if your dog's not facing in your direction but the eyes there are a lot of stress signals that the dog's eyes will tell you so if your baby's over here here's the baby head and your dog's doing this looking away from your baby you can see a lot of the whites of my eye here that's what we call whale eye that's a dog saying um i don't like this and i'm trying to think of happy thoughts right now and i'm just trying to get out of this area in my head but your dog's not not realizing if he would just remove his body from that area, the stress would go away. So again, that's your cue to say, hey, uh, you can see your dog's uncomfortable. Say, hey, Morgan, go lay down on your bed. Or hey, Morgan, come over here, baby. And calling her away from your, your baby in that situation and then taking her to go lay down. Um, another one that you might see is... Um, your dog moving away. So like your baby's on the floor doing tummy time and is happening to, happening to scoot closer and closer to your dog. And you'll see your dog just kind of shifting away, shifting away. Or if your baby is actively crawling and your dog keeps like looking its whole head away from that situation. Again, that's a stress signal. Your dog's trying to say, I don't want to be here and I'm going to a happy place in my head, but not realizing they can just move their body out of that situation. Um, Let's see, uh, mouth. Um, so a tight dog mouth, which with some breeds, I understand that this is going to be very difficult to see. We have a, a Neapolitan Mastiff whose lips just wiggle all the time. But I can tell when she's doing a tight mouth, um, tight, like when she just tightens her lips or she's doing what's called tight lipped licking. Um, and so when we humans are stressed, you know, his is my normal face. When I'm stressed, I might purse my lips or it's like I kind of hide them, right? That's my tight mouth. Um, and dogs will start to do licking. And that licking is very little and and short. So it's not like a dog that's like cleaning their face and doing a whole, you know, cheek. Um, but just, this is what it will kind of look like. Picture me as a dog. So tight mouth. And then I'm doing this. That's that tight mouth licking, okay? That's another stress signal. It doesn't mean your dog's a bad dog or he's about to kill your baby, but it does mean your dog's uncomfortable. And an uncomfortable dog sometimes can make bad choices, such as snapping, growling, or biting at your child. Because again, in the dog world, that is how they would communicate to the baby to get away or to the puppy to get away. So again, not okay with babies. But again, you are the leader, you are the parent, you are there to protect both your dog and your baby and to dissipate, diffuse that situation by showing your dog how to react to that. And then when your baby's old enough, even when they're not old enough, we still, we still talk these things through with our baby. But when they're old enough, starting to teach them these type of behaviors as well. Like when, when my dog stops looking at you and they're looking away, I say, oh, he just doesn't want to play anymore. See, he's trying to look over here. He just wants to see what's going on over there. He doesn't want to play with you anymore. Um, and so letting our kids understand that. Um, yawning, is, again, it's, we all do body language all the time. So it's not that your dog might yawn midday and you're like, oh, he's stressed and there's nothing going on. But yawning excessively in a situation that you could deem uncomfortable, um, that's a stress sign. So excessive yawning over and over again, coupled with some of these other behaviors 
or body signals is again, a stress factor. So, um, you haunting, it kind of is like your dog saying, I'd rather be anywhere else, but here, like, uh, um, almost like a sigh, right. But it's a, it's a yawn for a dog. So, um, body language, like your dog's body as a whole might be super relaxed and chill. And then the baby gets close and your dog gets tensed and it kind of maybe puffs up their chest or maybe crouches away. All of these things, again, is your dog saying, I don't know about this. Just telling them to do something else, to go play with your toy, go lay down. Just don't stay here to try to hold your ground. Get out of this uncomfortable situation. Um, be prepared to give space. When your dog is doing these things, you can, like I said, you can call them away. You can pick up your baby and take them away. Um, I might place myself between my baby and my dog. So if my dog felt like they needed to snap at or bite something, I would rather take that than my baby. So I always just put myself between, not necessarily my dogs and my baby, but maybe client dogs that have never been around babies. And they're like, mm, I don't know about this. Stepping between them and then communicating to that dog. I became a wall between my baby and that dog to say, no, all your attention's on me. I'm going to show you how to handle this. Let's go over here and lay down. And it's a really great thing when you can see your dog for themselves saying, I'm out of here. I need some space. Um, and they just go lay down on a bed or they go to their crate for 10 minutes. The door's wide open. They can come out whenever they're relaxed and ready. And when they come back out, they are like prancing a happy tail wag. And they're just like, okay, I feel great now. Let's start over. But in that moment that they were stressed, it could have been bad, but it's important to show them how to handle it. They say that dogs have dogs have the average IQ of a toddler. So if you can take a if you can think about a toddler that's stressed or frustrated, they don't usually make rational choices, right? They usually throw tantrums. They're illogical. They they fuss and cry about the most ridiculous things, like they didn't get their favorite spoon or the bird flew away and they didn't get to see it longer, like things that you can't control. But instead of getting mad and angry at your baby for those situations, we show our babies, we try to help them diffuse it. And so how we treat the babies is different than how we treat the dogs in these situations. Remember, a baby's a baby and a dog's a dog. But dogs do have the average IQ of a toddler. So they're not, I mean, they are very intelligent, but they are not intelligent enough to figure out uh, stressful solutions. So um, you know, res job to teach your baby, your toddler, how to handle these situations. It's your job to teach your dog how to handle these situations. So, um, if your dog is or has snapped at your baby, growled, or even attempted to bite your baby, everything I just said applies to you and more, but don't do anything. Keep your dog away from your baby and please contact a professional trainer to make sure they can have healthy interactions between your dog or baby or um, if it's not possible, letting you know that so that you can um, make sure your baby's safe. That is number one. Dogs are, they're living creatures and they have capabilities to do some pretty serious damage, um, especially to little faces. So it's never okay to, I want to say it's not okay. It is okay to love your dog and love your baby, but decide to rehome your dog or find a different solution for your dog other than living in your home with your baby. You can still love them both and still make a choice that separates your dog from your home. So um, humans always come first, children always come first, but this, this video was more so for those dogs that do have a more positive outlook on life. They're more happy-go-lucky and they may be stressed because the baby's new, but not because they are a typical reactive aggressive dog and would react that way. So. Um, if you have any questions to this video that I didn't cover or from week, week one, please post them in the comments. I would love to do a follow up to this and make sure um, I cover all of the, the questions and concerns that you might have for your new little bundle and dogs interactions. Um, but other than that, thanks so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Crystal with the Dog Psychology and Training Center, and I hope to see you next week on our Facebook Live. Bye.